banks. Remember your piggy bank? This is the first bank that we all had and know of. But we cannot keep all our money in a piggy bank. You must have heard your parents talking about bank accounts, credit cards, etc. Have you ever wondered what these terms mean? The place where people deposit their money and can borrow money for an interest is called a bank. Banks perform various functions like taking deposits, giving loans, transferring or receiving money, offering credit cards, debit cards, etc. The account in which an individual's money is kept is called a savings account. The savings account holder can withdraw the money from his account as and when required and interest is paid on the savings in the account. However, if an individual wants to get better interest, then he can open a fixed deposit. Banks also give loans for various purposes like building a house, buying a car or setting up a business. The bank charges interest on the loan. In olden days, one had to visit a bank to perform all banking transactions like depositing the check, withdrawing money, transferring money to another person, etc. But now, banks offer a lot of convenience. Children, do you see your parents visiting the bank often? They don't need to because most transactions can be done without going to the bank. For example, every month your parents' salary gets directly deposited in their bank account. But how can one access the money in the account? Now, suppose your father needs to pay the monthly rent. He has an option to issue a cheque to the owner of the house. A cheque is a payment instruction from the account holder to his bank directing to pay a sum of money to the person specified in the cheque. You must have accompanied your parents to the ATM to withdraw money and must have seen them using cards for payment while shopping. So what is an ATM and what are these cards? Apart from withdrawing money, ATMs can also be used for other banking services such as checking account balance, bill payments, etc. ATMs provide service round the clock and a customer can withdraw cash up to a certain limit during any time of the day or night. Do you know how the money gets transferred from one bank account to another? This is Rishabh, a college student studying in Delhi. His parents live in Mumbai. Rishabh needs 10,000 rupees urgently. He has a bank account of his own. If his parents send him a check, firstly, they would need to mail it to him. And then, he has to deposit it and it will be a few days before he can get the money. Instead, his parents can either transfer the money through internet banking or mobile banking. Internet banking or mobile banking allows individuals to carry out banking transactions from anywhere and at any time without needing to visit the bank. All that one requires is an internet connection and to register for online mobile banking facilities with the bank. One can use this facility to transfer funds, pay bills, check balance, etc. While online banking needs the use of a computer, mobile banking can be done using your mobile phone. Internet banking and mobile banking are tools to transfer the money. Rishabh's parents need to use either Real-term Gross Settlement RTGS or National Electronic Funds Transfer NEFT to transfer money to Rishabh's account. With these new technologies, one can transfer money instantly. The important features of RTGS and NEFT are a nationwide funds transfer system 
supporting the transfer of funds from any bank branch to any other bank branch anywhere in India. One needs to submit complete details such as receiver's name, account number, bank name, city, branch name, etc. to ensure smooth and swift transfer of funds. The details of the beneficiary can be submitted at the bank or through internet banking. In case of RTGS, the minimum amount would be 2 lakh rupees per transaction. There is no minimum or maximum limit for transferring money through NEFT. Children, hope you understood the importance of banks and how they make our lives easy.